Okay, so just let me know once you are able to see the screen. Um, is the screen visible? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Okay, so we are going to discuss only those questions which uh, were like, which Ishul was not able to do, right? Because only Ishul gave quiz last time. Okay, so and, that, and those questions were difficult, if I tell you honestly. So that is completely okay. Okay, so... Okay. So the very first question is, what number when used in place of the square or diamond above makes the statement true? Right, so what is the statement? The statement is three plus something divided by two is seven whole one by two, okay? The first thing is that, you know, seven whole one by two, looks a bit um, difficult to understand. Let's just write it this way, 7.5, okay? Now we need to think of a number which when we divide by two, we get 7.5, right? Because this is what the question is. So we cannot waste our time in thinking that way. All we have to do is just do it this way, three plus, let's just write X instead of, that diamond of square, we have 7.5 into 2. So x is basically 15 minus 3. That is 12, right? So d is the answer. Because like obviously uh, in SAT, some questions would look like that you have to think about it and then decide the answer. But it's not actually true. For every question, you'll be using equations, you'll be using algebra. So just, you know, try doing things as quick as you can, right? So this question is clearly a um, simple uh, equation. We think of it as a variable. They have used the shape, that does not matter. You can use X, you can use shape, you can use question mark, you can use anything. All you know is that you need to find this square thing, right? So simply you have to make it the subject of the equation like I did by using X instead of the diamond and I got 12 as my answer, right? So D is the answer. So Ishil, are you clear with this? Okay. So the next question was the sixth question. Okay. And Zahir, please, I want you to try these questions as well, okay? Like uh, in class right now. Okay. Uh, so the question says, the eggs in a certain basket are either white or brown, okay? If the ratio of the number of white eggs to the number of brown eggs is 2 by 3, each of the following could be the number of eggs in the basket except Okay, now before reading the options, you need to understand question completely, okay? So you have a basket, right? You have a basket in which you have uh, white and brown eggs, right? So like it has both white and brown eggs and the ratio is, the ratio of white eggs to brown eggs is two by three, right? So let's say like if we have um, 10 eggs in the basket, And if I have to find white eggs only, I'm going to find like this because this 2 by 3 basically means 2 plus 3. So like the full quantity which here I'm assuming, this is my assumption, right? If I am saying that let's say total number of eggs in the basket are 10 and I want to find the number of white eggs right so this is how i'll do it right i'm going to cross multiply i'll get 20 equals 5x and x is going to be 
4 okay so x is going to be 4 so this means that we have 4 y x and we'll have 6 brown x and now if you do 4 by 6 you are going to get 2 by 3 right so is this part clear it's not related to the question but this is how we do ratio questions is this thing clear yes ma'am okay so here Ishan, the logic which we have used in this part is that we have added 2 plus 3 because the total thing in the basket would be either white or brown right so we add 2 plus 3 okay okay so this is what i've used now the question says which of the following could be the number of eggs in the basket except okay so like 10 seemed fine when we use 10 we were able to get 2 by 3 again and this is because 10 is divisible by 5 right if i divide 10 by 5 I get 2. Okay, if I divide um, 15 by 5, that is the C option, I get 3. And similarly, if I divide uh, 30 by 5, I get uh, 6. And for 60, I get 12, right? So I am uh, able to divide 5 by all the options except B. So B is the answer. Okay, so here in such a question, first you need to be very careful. They want you to find except okay and since 12 is not divisible by 5 right 5 is not a factor of 12 and since we have 2 by 3 2 by 3 means 2 plus 3 that is 5 so it is important that the total number of eggs in your basket should be divisible by 5 they should be divisible by this sum they should be divisible by the sum of numerator and denominator of the fraction, which is basically telling you the ratio of the things you have in your basket, okay? Obviously, the situation would vary from question to question. In this question, we're talking about eggs. It could be that in future, there's a question where they're talking about rubbers and pencils, right? And they say that there's a basket which has rubbers and pencils. And the uh, ratio is like you have three to four, where three are the number of rubbers and four are the number of pencils. So in that case, you should know that when he, obviously such questions are done by proportion by ratio. So you should know that if total number of things in the basket are let's say seven, here you are going to get three, plus four and now if you want to find the number of rubbers you will write three here right and this would be x so are you clear about this thing that why we got b as our answer because it is important we know through this part we know through this part that we have add the numerator and denominator of the fraction which is basically our ratio right and the total number of elements or thing which we have in something in a basket in a bucket in a room in anything should be divisible by this number right by this number are you clear with this issue yes okay now we have to discuss okay all right, so this is the question. Okay. In the figure above, what is the value of C in terms of A and B? Okay, so this is C. We need to find C in terms of A and B. All right, so now if we think of this question, apparently it looks very easy because like this line right here is a straight line and we know that sum of angles on a straight line 
is 180 degrees. So this orange line is basically a straight line. So sum of angles on this orange line would be 180. So if somehow I get to find this pink angle, I know that this pink angle, A angle, and C angle, the sum would be equal to 180. And then I can, you know, um, make C the subject of the equation and get my answer in terms of A and B, right? But the real challenge is to find this part. Are you clear till here? Yes, ma'am. Okay, perfect. So for, for finding this part, Ishil and Zaheb, you guys should know that you have many triangles in this one um, diagram, right? So you need to think of this green as a triangle. Think of this as a triangle now. And if somehow you are able to find the other two angles, like every triangle has three angles, right? So this angle is one angle, then this is the second angle, and this is the third angle. So if somehow you get to find the other two angles, you can find the pink angle as well, okay? That is clear, right? So like if we want to find this angle, again, we will use this logic. Sum of angles on a straight line is 180. Now this line right here is also a straight line, right? And I can clearly see that this angle is B, this angle is B. So B degrees plus B degrees plus the angle which I am interested in finding. Let's call it X here. I'm talking about this angle right here is basically 180. Okay. So if I make X the subject of my equation, I'm going to get 180 minus 2b, right? Okay, so I'm clear with this part. I'm clear with this part. Okay, so this angle is 180 minus 2b. Now, can anyone tell me how am I going to find this angle? Because like once I have this angle and like once I have two and one, I would be able to find the pink one. And once I have my pink angle, this one, the third angle is pink angle, I would be able to find C easily, right? So, the, so my question is, how can I find this two, the two angle, this angle? How can I find that? Any ideas ahead? Any idea issue? Um, 180 minus A minus B. Excellent. Very well done. So sum of angles in a triangle are 180, right? So if I think of this whole uh, triangle, I know that this side is A, this side is B, like, sorry, this angle is A, this angle is B. So 180 degrees minus A plus B is basically going to give me this angle right let's write x degrees now for this one this x degrees right so this angle basically is 180 minus a plus b okay perfect so finally we have our two angles which we were interested in um, finding and now we can find the pink angle okay for finding the pink angle i only have to Again, use the property that sum of angles in a triangle is 180. So 180 minus 180 minus 2B plus 180 minus A plus B. Um, Zaheb, are you with us? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Minus 180 plus 2B minus 180 plus a plus b right so this minus is going to make this plus and then we'll have a plus b so these two can be cancelled and i'm going to get 3b like 2b plus b is 3b 
प्लस ए माइनस वन एटी ओके सो दिस एंगल विच आई हैव जस्ट कैलकुलेटेड इज बेसिकली फॉर इज इट दी आंसर और इट्स सम अदर एंगल विच एंगल डिड आई जस्ट कैलकुलेट angle three excellent yeah this this angle right here okay so this basically is 3b plus a minus 180 okay now we are going to use this sum of angles on a straight line is 180 so c plus a plus the pink or third angle that is 3b plus A minus one eighty would be equal to one eighty. Now the only thing which I have to do the last step is basically I need to make C the subject of the equation. Why? Because the question said what is the value of C right in terms of A and B. So C would be one eighty plus one eighty minus two A. Minus three b, right? So this is going to be three sixty minus two a minus three b. So e is the answer, right? So is this clear, Ishaan and Zaheer? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma okay, perfect. Okay, now we have to discuss. Okay. So this is basically the question. In the first term, uh, sorry, the first term in the sequence above. This is the sequence. Is a okay? So that is quite obvious that this is the sequence and a is the first term, and each term after the first term is three times the preceding term. Okay, so I multiply a by three and I get three a right. So this is what they are saying that each term after the first term is three times the preceding term. All right. So if the sum of the first five terms is six hundred and five. What is the value of a? All right. So now, this is a sequence. The blue, uh, this part is a sequence, and the first term is a. And here, one thing has been mentioned clearly that each term after the first is three times the preceding term, which basically implies that this is a geometric sequence, right? We have a ratio that is three. Which is being multiplied with every term to get the next term, right? This is what we have in geometric sequence equations in the hip, equations in the hip. Yeah. Right, Ishan. Or take. Yes, ma'am. Okay. So here the first term is a. The ratio is three because we multiply three with every term to get the next term. N is five because if the sum of first five terms is and the sum of uh, n terms is six hundred and five. So here n is five. So I can write it this as well. Okay. So clearly we'll be using the formula for the sum that is a. R to the n minus one by R minus one. Okay, so the sum is six hundred and five. A is going to be A because we need to find A. What is the value of A? That is the question. Now we have three to the five minus one divided by three minus one. Okay. So now I have to. Take this two to the side, and I am going to have a into. Okay, so we have three to the five minus one. That would be two forty two. 
right? And A is going to be five. Right, so the answer is A is five. So are you clear, Ishal and Zaheb? Yes. Yes. Okay. Wait, ma'am. Like, why yeah. did we went with geometric terms instead of arithmetic? Okay, because in our arithmetic um, series or in that sequence we have a fixed difference, right? In that case, here, you would never ever find the word times, okay? In that case, they, um, you know, might say that the difference is of three or you add three in the, uh, you know, preceding term to get the next term. But this is the difference in geometric and arithmetic sequences, okay? In geometric sequences, there's a fixed ratio, which is either a fraction or it is 3, 2, it could be any number that is being multiplied with the previous number to get the next number, right? But arithmetic sequences are, are of this type. Like you have 1, then you have 3, then you have 5, okay? So every time you're adding 2, here you are adding 2, here you are multiplying 3, okay? This is the difference. Since we are multiplying 3, so clearly we know that this sequence is not arithmetic, it is geometric sequence, okay? So this is why we have used the sum formula for geometric series, okay? All right. Are, are you clear with this? Yes, ma'am. Okay, perfect. Okay, now we have to discuss Okay, I'll zoom out a bit. Zaheb, I would want you to try this question first, okay? And you shall try this question once again, right? I'll give you three minutes because this question is, uh, if I tell you honestly, difficult and very important as well. So like, I'll, I'll give you three minutes. Please try this question, both of you.
Okay. Um, are you guys done? Like, did you try at least? Um, yeah, I got this in my copies for. Okay, sorry, say it again. Uh, I got this in my copies for. Okay, and what about you, Zahib? Not sure, Nitli. Okay, and Ichil, what is your answer? 57. Okay, okay. All right, now let's do it together, okay? And then I would um, want you guys to tell me your method as well, just so I can know that why the answer is wrong. Okay, this is completely okay. Okay, let's read the question first, right? So, um, a merchant sells three types of clocks that chime as indicated by the check marks in the table above. Okay, so let's look at the table now. So we have three types of clocks, A, B, C, A, B, C. And here in the first column, they are telling us the number of clocks, right? So we have 10 clocks of type A, five clocks of type B, and three clocks of type C, okay? Now this part is very important, okay? Now this times N times on the nth hour. This means that if let's say um, it's the sixth hour, so the um, clock is going to chime six times, right? So this is what it says, times, n times on the nth hour. So this part is important, right? Okay, all right. And then the second um, column is saying, like this column, that it chimes once on the uh, hour. Okay, so it chimes once on the hour. Like if it's six, if it's seven, if it's eight, if it's one, if it's two, it would chime once only on the hour okay it has nothing to do with the hour like it has nothing to do with six it has nothing to do with seven after every hour it chimes okay and then the uh this column is telling us chimes once on the half hour so this would chime like at 6 30 then at like 7 30 then at 8 30 so be very clear okay this chimes on the half hour right on the half hour half hour basically is 6 30 7 30 8 30 these are half hours right so are you clear with the understanding yes ma'am okay all right so So the question is, what is the total number of chimes of the inventory of the clocks in the 90 minute period from 7.15 to 8.45? Now, this is very important, right? So we have 7.15 to Eight forty-five. Okay. All right. So this, these are the timings which we are interested in. Right. Now, um, we need to find the total number of chimes. Okay. So, if we talk about this column first, where um, the clocks chime n times on the nth hour, okay? So we have like 10 and five. Total number of um, clocks is 15 and they chime n times on the nth hour. So between 7.15 and 8.45, the only whole hour is eight, right? The only hour is eight, like um, 7.15, after 7.15, we will have 7.30, then 7.45, and then 8, right? So between these two, the only whole hour, by whole I mean um, only hour without any minutes, right, would be 8. So 15 clocks would chime 
एट टाइम्स तो तीन क्लॉक वुड चाइम एट टाइम्स ऑन दी एट आवर राइट वी आर गोइंग टू हैव दिस इन दिस टाइम पीरियड आर यू क्लियर विद दिस पार्ट Yes, ma'am. Okay. Plus. Uh, yes, ma'am. Okay. Let's talk about this column now. This is going to chime once on the hour. Okay. So again, the hour. Like we only have um, eight as the hour. We only have eight as the whole hour. Okay. So this is going to uh, chime once only. Okay. So it would chime once only. and we have three clocks of this type so three right okay and then we have plus we have 10 for this part 3 plus this part 13 okay we are clear with 13 but what next chimes once on the half hour so half hour means 6:30 7:30 8:30 8 right so in this time frame between 7:15 to 8:45 we are going to have how many half hours two half hours right yes okay so we'll have two here now if you multiply all this you are going to get 149 so 149 was the answer right zaheb yes ma'am are you sure it's clear you sure is this is this clear now uh, yes ma'am Okay, perfect. Let's talk about the last question. Okay, so I'll read the question. The question says, if the five cards shown above are placed in a row, so that this one, the one which is filled properly, like this one, is never at either end. How many different arrangements are possible? Okay. So for this question, like total, we have five cards: one, two, three, four, five. Okay. So we are going to have five cards, and we need to think of the number of arrangements which are possible, such that this card never comes here. Or here, so like, are you clear with the question? Yes, ma'am. Okay, yes, so I I want you guys to try again. I'll give you some time. Please try this question. I you should already try it, but Zaheb, you have not tried this, so please try this again. Okay.
Okay, so any idea? Are you guys done? Uh, yeah, my answer is still the same. Your, your answer is same or different? Same, okay. And what about you, Zaheb? 63. Okay, and Mitchell, what's your answer? All right, so like, um, total number of cards is five. So like I have five places and the condition is that on the, like this hand and this hand, okay? On either ends, you cannot have this card, right? Okay, so let's just write down the possibilities. Okay. So I have five slots and for the end slots, I cannot have every card, right? I can, I just have four options for the end slot. Okay. I just have four options for the end slots. I can total, I have five cards, but for the end slots, I can just have four cards right i can just have i just have four options because i cannot use this one so i will write four and i will write three here because for the two last because for this position and this position for like the uh, end positions i only have four options right so if i am getting four in the first part i am left with three options only so are you clear with the end positions Like, why did I write four and three? Because in I didn't. Yes. I didn't understand. Okay. You cannot understand or you can understand? Cannot. Okay. Okay. That's completely fine. Okay. Total number of cards is five, right? And we have, obviously, we have five positions. So the condition is that if the five cards shown above are placed in a row so that this card is never at the either end, right? So by either end, they mean this position and this position. Like if the question was only this one, if this was the question, if the five cards are shown above are placed in a row, how many different arrangements are possible? So what we do is we just count the number of cards. We have five cards. So we do it this way. Five into four into three into two into one. So do, do you understand this, Sahib, Anisha? Do you understand this thing? Do you guys understand this part? Uh, yes, ma'am. And Zaheb, what about you? I, I still don't understand. Like, I mean, like the four, like sure, there are possibilities since uh, the middle one, we can't really have that in the either ends, but the third one, the number three, no, just, just, leave, really just, just leave this thing. I'm not, I'm not asking about this. Just tell me that, did you understand this part? Like, do you know the basics of this concept? That if we have five cards and if the question was this part only, if the five cards shown above are placed in a row, how many different arrangements are possible, right? So in that case, we would have done this question this way. We multiply five into four into three. Do you understand this thing? The one which I've written in blue only? Yes, ma'am. Okay, perfect. So you know the basics, right? So, okay. So now, like, you know that if you were to arrange five cards only, this is how you do. And in this question, we have this part as well. 
which says so that this card is never at either end right okay this basically means that for the end slots for this slot and for this slot we can we only have four options since we cannot use this card we cannot use this card at the either ends so we only have one two three four options okay so immediately before settling numbers in the inner blanks in these blanks i am going to settle the numbers for the uh, outer ones as well because if i do it for the inner ones initially i would not be certain about this one right i want to have a card which is not this one on this end as well right are you able to understand like at least 10% okay okay look total number of cards is 5 but for the either ends we cannot use one card which is this one so we are going to subtract one we get four so like we have four options for either end so if i choose if i write four here i am obviously going to write three here right because like here i already um, had one card and now i'm left with four options only one option was chosen here now i only have three options so i'll write three here okay let me explain it completely and then i'll uh, get back to this part okay now we are done with the last slots we are done with the condition which we had in the question and now we need to think about the internal slots so for the internal slots once we are done with this part and this part we are left with 5 minus 2 that is three choices okay we only have three choices now and now for these three choices we can easily write 3 into 2 into 1 which we do in every case in every simple case so this part in the center is a simple case but the ones with this part and this part is complicated so i had to settle numbers here first and then i am writing the internal numbers so like this sum is going to be 72 so 72 was the answer so like um are you clear with this now please tell me honestly yes ma'am are you sure zahib like did you understand why we have 4 and 3 yes ma'am okay and ishil are you clear as well no ma'am i don't understand you did not understand right no okay 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 so i'll explain this again no no worries okay all right so think of it as a different question think of it that the question says if the five cards shown above are placed in a row like this part and then this part how many different arrangements are possible okay so how we do such questions we make like five dashes because we have five slots we have five cards 1 2 3 4 okay okay so if the question only said that we have five cards how many different arrangements are possible so for the first position we have five options we write five here once we have used one option here we are left with four only then we are we have used two options we are left with three only then two only and then one only right so this would have been the solution if the question was this straightforward right so you need to understand that initially we had five options but for second position we only have four options because we 
have used one option in the first page okay but the but question is not this question has a situation which says that you have five cards but on the either ends you cannot use the gray card right this gray card this card okay so we have like one two three four and five five positions and on the either end like this is the this is one end and this is the second end on these two ends we cannot have all the five options we only have one two three four we only have these four options right because we cannot use this gray card on either ends okay so for this slot i have four options and like initially i have four options for either end once i have uh, chosen one i'm left with three options only so i will write three here so like are you clear with the end slots uh, now why do you write three at the other end because okay so you know that for for both of these ends we have four options you're clear with that part right you agree that for the like for the ends okay perfect now look if you have used one option if you have used one card just like we write four here after five because of that fact i am writing three here i can write this way as well i can write this way as well because i am multiplying so multiplication is commutative my answer would be same but you know just like i know that uh, i have five options initially and then i'll have four options because one option would be picked up one option would be like um, used i am left with three options then this is why i'm using three okay Okay, okay, okay. Wait. Yeah. Uh, okay. But why did you write it at the other end? Why not after four? Okay. Okay. Excellent. Very, very, very good question. I will fill in the internal blanks as well. I'm writing it at this end because the question says that if the five cards shown above are placed in a row, so that this is never at the either end. This was my condition. I have to make sure. that before filling in the other slots i fill in this last part this this is the condition right i have to make sure that for the last two for the first slot and for the last slot i only pick up numbers from 1 2 3 and 4 from these options that is why look if i okay let me do it otherwise if i i'm doing it this way that i say that i have four on the side right and i say that okay once i have four here i am okay obviously if i have four here and if i think of it as a normal question in total i had five options right in total i have five options here i can still write four like for this card i still have four options i have One, two, three, four, five options in total, right, Ishil? If I write four here in the first position, I know that in the second position I can still have four options because, like, only one would be chosen in the first part, and then five minus one is four. But like, if this four, if this four uses you know um, some options which i need for this part because i have a condition for this part i cannot use every card here okay i can only use 1 2 i can only use 1 2 3 4 4 here so this means that i need to uh, plug in these values first and then think about the internal values because just like this case once i'm done with this four and i think of this lot how many options can i have on the second one issue i can have four options do you agree with this four or you you were thinking that we 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 write we will write three here do you know that why this is four and not three 
ओके दिस इज फोर बिकॉज इन टोटल वी हैड फाइव ऑप्शन here in the first blank we have used one option only so we are left with four here we used four here because we had a condition okay we had a condition we cannot we were not able to use five here so we had to use four here but if i use four i know this is getting very confusing but i'm trying my best to explain if we get four at the second position we might not be able to get uh you know we might get this blank right here at the end which should not happen right so like be clear that before uh, allotting numbers to other blanks just allot numbers to those blanks where you have condition you have condition at the either end right so basically the condition is that at the either end you cannot have this option so you are left with only four options so if you have four options here You will have three options here, and once you are done with these two, you know that two options are gone. So you are left with three options only. So you will write three into two into one in the central blanks. So is this somewhat clear? For exactly, uh, yeah. for exactly, like uh, you were not able to understand. Um, why three ended up on the other end? You wanted one here, like you were expecting that we should have one at the end. And I wasn't really expecting anything, but I wasn't expecting three at the end. Yeah, yeah, I know. I, I know didn't... because, like, usually we do questions this way, right? So this was a difficult question. I agree, but like I have told you the way. Okay, the way is the method is. that in such questions you can also get such simple questions you can also get such complicated questions okay so the rule is that always use always fill in the last uh, always fill in those blanks first where you have a condition so you knew that on the last ends where i have written 3 and 4 you cannot have every option you only have four options okay so like first it's good that you fill those blanks and then you fill in the other options right yeah okay i got it you'll get a better idea once we'll practice more questions okay so don't worry okay all right so we are done with these questions okay Okay, just give me two minutes. Okay, I have to switch to other angle.